Welcome back at my rockabilly guitar bedroom and today we are going to play some Scotty Moore stuff. Now this guitar part is a little bit messy, that's the way how Scotty played it and it is still an evergreen rockabilly classic. I don't know if you are going to play everything note for note or maybe you would like just to take out some of your favorite leaks, but if there is one single thing you might want to learn in this lesson, it will be how to play Travis speaking without actually playing Travis speaking. Now let me show you what do I mean. Typically what is, what is your typical Travis speaking? It's a bass line plus some melody. Now back in the 70s or maybe 80s those steady boy Neo rockabilly bands would have played it differently. So no finger picking at all. And Scotty Moore would have done it like this. Once again, slower. So you can see it is still some kind of finger picking but without the bass line. And that's pretty much it. Well, as I've said before, this guitar part is messy. Frankly speaking, it's full of playing mistakes. For me, it sounds like Scotty was struggling with the tempo with quickly changing chords. But nevertheless, let's check it out. It starts from a very familiar bass line so this is the first lick watch my right hand So, in the very beginning, for me it looks like one of those interesting mistakes that Scotty made. I think he wanted to play like this, first string and third string, but accidentally he played the first two strings. Now, left hand. The chords here, imagine this conventional E-shape chord, but on 8th fret, so it is actually C, but we don't need 5th string, and actually Scotty doesn't even play 4th string, converting this chord into C7. And for this last part we are adding C on 4th string here. So it's not C7 anymore, but just normal C. And then the next lick goes like this. were actually two leaks. So the first one, the first part is once again, watch my right hand. So here we 
have a slide in the left hand. This is exactly an example of Travis speaking with no Travis speaking. No bass line. And the chord here is it is G9, I think. But with the bass on the sixth string and middle finger is traveling between sixth and fifth strings. Then the next line. The familiar one. And I'm playing it using my fingers of the right hand. But if you listen to the recording, you will find that the notes are somewhat uneven. So I didn't really practice it that way, but I believe Scotty plays it like this. Might have been the case. So, actually, first two notes with a thumb, kind of a swipe, and then index finger. I'm not sure, but you might want to give it a try. Now, if it is a little bit fast, a little bit too fast, and if you struggle with the tempo, just like Scotty did on the recording, here's a hint. You might want to control the tempo actually using your left hand. So just make sure if the tempo is tabadam 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 wabadam tabadam 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 So just make sure that your left hand really moves in the right tempo and the right hand will automatically follow it. Yeah, here we have a band, a micro band, or maybe, well, just a band on the second string with the open first string. And then the next one, it is just a big slide on third string and fourth string, like this. So the chord is just C6-9. And after the slide, left hand is doing nothing and the right hand is doing this. And then we have one interesting thing. Many players would try and would might actually struggle to reach to the 12th fret with the pinky. While actually what Scotty does, he simply moves the chord. He moves to this one, which is yet one more variation of C6-9, this time with E, which is a major third or in the key of C, E in the bass. So it goes like this. And here we are getting to F9 chord with C in the bass. So once again, let's watch the right hand. Then position change, chord change. 6th string.
Well, this lick should be already familiar. It's the same that we had in the beginning of the solo. There it was on G9 chord, now it is F9. Again, Travis speaking without Travis speaking. And then the next one is... This is, I believe, what's this? It's F sharp diminished chord. And the next lick. So this is C. C7 maybe, with the extra note on the first string. Watch again my right hand, there is just one single bass note in the beginning. And then moving the same chord, just three, three frets down, so it becomes A. Now, I'm afraid you might get a little bit lost. I've got a little bit lost indeed already. So let's repeat, maybe from this lick. And then... moving to D chord, D7 chord. This is interesting, so this part is coming from this chord shape, which is C7, moved two frets up, so it becomes D7 or D9, and this one you might think it's a minor, a, a minor 9, but in fact it's a part of this D9 shape. Now watch my right hand once again. Sorry. And here is yet one more. Scotty Moore's mistake, or should I call it imperfection? So obviously he strives, he tries to pick fifth open string. But misplaces it and hits sixth open string instead. And the next leak. Just like a couple of previous ones. And then back on our good old conventional C chord. Right hand. And this is the beginning of the next verse. So let's try to play it. I mean the whole solo start to end.
really sorry that my guitar is a little bit out of tune on my demo recording. Well, it's actually because the strings I use there, the flat wounds, are almost three years old already, really. I have to change them. As a disclaimer, Scotty's guitar was also a little bit out of tune in this solo and, as usual, he made a couple of mistakes. Let's check them out. So, this one is really a variation of the first one, so the same chords, like C7 with an extra note on the second string, the same bass line in the beginning, and now watch my right hand. Sorry? And then... Here I'm playing third string with my thumb and at the same time do a pull off on the second string with my left hand. The next one, the same bass line. Once again, right hand. First two strings, not first and third, but first and second. And then two. C9 chords, C9 chord with G in the bass, uh, sorry, G9 chord with, what's that, D in the bass, this one. This lick should be already familiar. So once again the whole first part. So far so good, but then things get a little bit different than in the first solo. So, well, we have the same slide. Here it is already a little bit different. Right hand. And then in the left hand we just stay on the same C6-9 chord. Reaching out to the first string, 12th, 12th fret and quickly getting back. So like this. This is F9 chord with C in the bass and right hand goes like this. Then first two strings. This is really something strange. Once again, first two strings, bass, then two more notes,
This is just some sort of C minor. I don't know, I have no explanation really. And then this one. This should be familiar. The next one. Well, it's like if you try to move your good old conventional D chord all the way up. So it becomes a part of A, A major. Same thing, just two frets up. This one starts with a ghost note. And finally... Whew. Let's try to play the whole thing together. show you the accompanying parts really quick. So those are based around the same chords. In the beginning we have this C major chord without fifth string, quickly moving into C7. So like this. Sorry. And then C7. with a hammer-on on the second string and then still C7 and moving into G9 with D in the bass This is the very same lick Scotty plays in the same, at the same place in the solo and he repeats it four times. Let's just play from the very beginning.
last note here, Scotty actually misplays it. And he hits, I believe, 7th fret. 7th fret on 6th string. Kind of ghost note. But I really cannot play it like that. So I, I just swapped it for the normal C. And then C6-9 chord. And then watch my left hand. So here the left hand is jumping between 8th fret and 12th fret. Right hand. And then to F9 chord. So once again. And then the next league. So this is F sharp diminished. And then just like in the solo, in the first solo. D7 chord, G, and conventional C. Now all together. Accompanying part from the second verse, after playing the first solo, Scotty ended up with this chord. And it was a little bit too hard to move left hand really, really fast to play this bass line. So instead, what did Scotty do? He just slided up the 6-9 chord. And continued like this.
this is already familiar, then quickly moving to C7 or C major, C major shape. Then So this is the same G9 chord, G9 shape that is getting moved up and down. Right hand. And then a familiar lick. After that, Scotty quickly moves to the third fret, third position, G7 chord. And the right hand is doing this. And then... Open sixth string and to C major. So once again the whole first part. I'm just continuing three times in the row F9 and then watch my left hand this should be already familiar as well and just like in the first solo Open sixth string something like this with this conventional C shape. So, the last verse, the accompanying part, I have really a strong feeling that in the end of the second solo, things were not going according to the plan, I mean the plan of Scotty Moore, he kind of went astray and probably he just gave up thinking, ah, I will play anyway anything, in this last verse we will have one more take anyway. But there were no takes left. And here is what we can hear on the recording. Once again, watch my right hand. And then the chord changes a little bit. So again the first part, sorry, G9. 
and I just continuing and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So here once again watch watch the the right hand actually you could have played these chords like this just with the pick but that's not the thing Scotty Moore does so he really uses thumb and index finger one two three four one two three four and then immediately he puts this chord shape so he starts from somewhere here it doesn't matter but slides all the way up to C major. Once again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. F9. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, everything was played with thumb and index finger in the right hand. And that was just because by Elvis Scott and Bill. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time soon. Bye.